I've been separated from my group. Uh, it's been a couple of hours now, I think. I'm not sure. I was trying to find my way out and I can't. Six million bodies, countless bones, death, loss, and whispering walls. The catacombs of Paris and the world hide some pretty dark things, so let's check it out. The intricate underground tunnels that rest beneath the city of Paris span over two thousand miles, but only about two miles of the tunnel system are open to the public, and access is still only given to those who have booked guided tours of the underground cemetery that houses over six million corpses, which took 12 years to relocate to their final resting place underneath the city. The rest of the tunnels are banned from exploration for safety reasons. They are unmapped, the stability of the limestone tunnels are not guaranteed, and they are easy to get lost in. Along with that, some passages are very low, narrow, and partially flooded, making it incredibly difficult to maneuver through. Although the Parisian government warns against entering the restricted areas of the tunnels and actively works to keep people out, through holes in the street, sewer drains, and cracks in the walls, people have managed to find their way in. The problem is, once they do, many of them are unable to find their way out. Some people believe that the reason so many people get lost while exploring the dark underground tunnels of Paris is due to the tunnels changing. People who have spent enough time in the underground swear to have gone down one passage only for it to disappear when it comes time for them to turn back. Perhaps this is true, or perhaps there are just so many branching pathways, it's almost impossible to tell where you came from or where you're going. Next up, we have the discovery of an abandoned camcorder holding some lost and long forgotten footage of a catacombs explorer who went missing beneath the city. The tape was discovered by a man named Frederick Freeland, who had gone into the catacombs himself during a separate expedition. When he got home, he reviewed the footage, which shows a man exploring the tunnels. Originally, everything seems pretty normal. The man on the tape is picking up bones, sloshing through areas with high water levels, looking at artwork along the walls of the tunnels, and following the directions of arrows that can be seen along the walls as well. All of a sudden, however, the man begins to run fast and then even faster, and his breathing starts to pick up too, becoming panicked, quick and short. He makes his way deeper and deeper into the catacombs until suddenly he drops the camera in a puddle of water and continues running even faster than before, audibly panting in fear. Whether or not the man made it out of the tunnels on his own, whether he got lost or rescued remains unknown, along with who or what had been chasing him, if there really was anything or any one following him at all. What do you guys think happened? While it is entirely possible that the man in the found footage had simply hallucinated the fact that he was being chased, or was simply panic looking for an exit after realizing that he had become lost, it is also entirely possible that he was being chased by a member of one of Paris's many secret underground societies that have been known to congregate in the tunnels beneath the city. They call themselves cataphiles, and considering the fact that they have really made the restricted areas of the catacombs their home, they probably know the unmapped passages better than any other explorer on Earth, including the City Planning Commission of Paris. On many occasions, explorers and police officials have found rooms within the closed off sections of the catacombs covered in graffiti, murals, equipped with food and drink, and in one case, a fully functioning movie theater was discovered by explorers. But when police went to check it out not long after, the entire setup had disappeared. While it might seem like the catafiles are pretty chill, word around the tunnels is that they are actually quite territorial, and that they have been known to take the flashlights or even straight up kill tourists wandering around their self-declared areas of the underground. That's pretty dark stuff. As unpleasant as that last point was, this next one is just as creepy. So we all know that along with the cataphiles, the catacombs are home to more than six million dead bodies, packed tight and stacked up 10 feet deep, which means there's like a 99.9% .9 chance that the place is haunted. I mean, it has to be six million people and you're telling me not one single soul stuck around to haunt the crap out of us? I just don't buy it. Surprisingly, however, there aren't many ghost stories surrounding the attraction. No one, as far as I know, has made any claims of coming face to face with some kind of poltergeist who has tried to damn them down to the ninth layer of hell. 
But on the flip side, many of people have reported seeing frantic scratch marks on the walls in one part of the Paris catacombs, and have reported hearing strange noises coming from behind them while examining the scratches as well. Coincidence, haunting, or hallucination? You tell me. Next up, we have the discovery of Philbert Aspert, who worked as a doorkeeper for the Vandel Grace Hospital in the 1700s during the French Revolution. One night in November of 1793, he made the decision to enter into the Paris catacombs through a staircase located in the courtyard of the hospital. He was never seen alive again. And it wasn't until 11 years after his disappearance that his body was found by explorers. In 1804, Aspert was discovered in one of the tunnels and was buried where he was found. No one is really sure what would have prompted the man to enter the tunnels in the first place, as the ease in which a person might become lost in them was common knowledge at the time. Perhaps the saddest part of the story, and certainly the most eerie and ironic, is that Philbert's body had been found just mere feet away from an exit, which would have led him safely back up into the outside world. Perhaps he had wanted to remain underground, or perhaps he truly just missed his chance at survival. Either way, it's pretty dark. Next up, we have the killing of Eugenie Marsac and her daughter inside of the Paris catacombs. In 1824, a man named Alexander Francor Nard was working in the catacombs as a torchbearer when he began seeing Eugenie, a rather rich widow who has been described as way out of Alexander's league. One day, Alexander offered to show her and her young daughter around the catacombs. The three went down into the tunnels, but after a while, only Alexander came back up. He fled from Paris before anyone had time to notice the women's disappearance, but eventually they did. An investigation was opened which led to the discovery of the women in the tunnels beneath Paris. Eugenie had been killed by a blow to the head from a blunt object, and her daughter had been killed after being thrown into a stone pillar. The police were eventually able to trace the crime back to Alexander, and he was sentenced to death by guillotine on March 7th of 1820. 25. Next up, the whispering walls of the Paris catacombs, which we touched briefly upon in an earlier point. Many people have claimed to have heard these strange noises coming from inside the restricted areas of the underground passageways, mainly the sound of whispers that appear as though they originate directly from the limestone walls themselves. A journalist who visited Paris recounts his journey into the catacombs and his experience with the whispers. He claims to have met up with a man named Pierre for a tour of the banned areas of the catacombs. Pierre led the journalist, who had fallen and hurt his leg upon entry, deeper and deeper into the catacombs before abandoning him, injured in the tunnels. It is then that the journalist claims to have begun hearing whispers seeping through the walls of the catacombs. The journalist began following the whispers, which eventually turned into chanting, and he found himself at a ceremony which involved human sacrifice. Eventually, Pierre found him and led him out of the catacombs, but when the two resurfaced, the journalist claims that one of the members of the sacrificial ceremony held him at weapons point, you know, and threatened his life. The journalist was able to make it out of Paris, but to this day, he says that he fears that the members of the organization, which he believes to be the Illuminati, still might come after him. Hence why the story is anonymous, I suppose. Next up, we have the mystery of Elizabeth Libert. In 2000, the young woman, along with nine others, decided to explore the forbidden tunnels of the Paris catacombs. They were all experienced explorers, but it seems that at one point in the exploration, Elizabeth split off from the rest of the group. An absolutely terrible idea. She was never seen again. When police discovered that she had gone missing, a search party was sent into the tunnels, but the young woman was never found. Speculation as to whether or not she slipped away to start a new life, got lost in the caves, or was taken by someone dwelling in the darkness began to circulate throughout Paris. There is really no other information available on the case other than the fact that even after 24 
four years of search and rescue advancements, it still remains unsolved, which really goes to show the true dangers of the endless tunnels of the Paris catacombs. Okay, moving on from Paris, because I think that dead horse could use a bit of a rest. We have Catacomb de Cappuccini located in Palermo, Sicily, which despite what some people say is still technically part of Italy. What earns this particular catacomb a spot on today's list is the rather ghoulish displays of bodies along its underground walls. Mummies line the tunnels, preserved and fully dressed, standing upright, pinned to the walls with their feet and arms bound together. It's definitely a strange and eerie sight if not a slightly intriguing one as well. The ages of the mummies range vastly, making the sight of the tunnels all the more disconcerting. And some of the older skulls hang open at the mouth, making it appear as though the deceased come with a permanent expression of shock, horror, or disbelief. Next on our list today, we have the Odessa catacombs, home to almost 7 million corpses, give or take, plus one. The Odessa catacombs run underneath the city of Ukraine's capital, Kiev. It's one of the largest catacombs in the entire world, spanning over 15,000 miles, putting the Paris catacombs 200 miles to shame. Don't come for me. I'm not saying that one is better than the other. I'm just referring to the distance. They're both incredibly extensive in history and in danger, which is why the majority of both are closed off to the public. While the Odessa catacombs are like the Parisian ones in many ways, they're also completely different. For one, probably the biggest point, they were never actually used to bury the dead, but instead they were used for mining operations as well as a hiding place during World War II. In 1980, after the war, the government did their best to seal up all of the entrances of the tunnels, but it seems that their best wasn't good enough. Many people still managed to find their way in, but the real problem was finding a way out. In 2005, a young woman attended a New Year's party in the tunnels, during which she became lost, and she was left by her friends, underground to starve to death in the dark. Two years later, a group of young men were exploring the tunnels when they came across the body of the woman badly decomposing across the floors of the tunnels, far from any kind of exit. She was later removed and laid to rest, but her discovery serves as a warning to those thinking about exploring the vast and winding tunnels of the Odessa catacombs. There was one point in time I thought it might be kind of neat to visit the Paris catacombs, perhaps even the restricted areas. I no longer feel that way. How about you guys? Would you visit any of these places? They're so creepy, but if you would, let me know in the comments. I've been your host, Hannah Thompson, and I will see you in our next video.